How many times did it happen to you that you read and reread something you need to learn or study only to find yourself unable to recall anything a few hours later? If that's the case, you're not alone. What's up, Interisers? This is Juan Cruz, and in this video, we'll dive deep into a learning strategy called the Feynman Technique and improve on it, which is the reason why this video is called the Feynman Technique 2.0. So let's get it on. I love learning. I spent countless hours a week reading books, watching YouTube videos and taking courses. And that feels amazing. But when someone asks me to explain something to them, my so-called knowledge falls apart. In my head, everything made sense and I was clear about the subject. But when it was showtime, I realized my clarity was merely an illusion. But this is to be expected. We nowadays live in a world that's constantly feeding us new information with memorable, easy to digest snippets, either through engaging YouTube videos eloquent tweets, short and sweet articles, or story-like podcasts. And of course, we consume them because it's entertaining and at the same time they teach us stuff. But are they really? There's a well-known psychological phenomenon called the illusion of competence. Basically, it's when you believe you know something or master some concept, but in reality you haven't. That's why you might read a book for a test and are sure you understand it deeply, but in the middle of the exam you unfortunately realize you didn't. Not because we've watched the video or read a book about a subject means that we understand it, but since the video or the book is so well made, clear and digestible, we fall into the illusion that we know as much as the person that made it. But nothing can be farther from the truth. Media consumption doesn't mean learning, reading doesn't mean studying, and memorizing doesn't mean understanding. So, what is learning and understanding in the first place? And is there anything beyond them? Etymology tells us that the word understand means to stand in the midst of or to stand under the subject that we want to learn. It refers to the experience of being embedded in our topic. On the contrary, remembering is to recall something from memory that's not actually present. We might have remembered some mathematical formula for a physics test and effectively applied it to several exercises, but that's not the same as deeply understanding what's being represented, and that's probably why we forget it after a day or two. As an analogy, swimming in the pool is not the same as remembering swimming in the pool. But perhaps more interestingly, getting your feet wet is not the same as fully diving in the pool. This brings us to a concept I call the three levels of learning, which if you get it, it will completely revolutionize how you approach your studying and perhaps even your life. Not all learning is equal, there are different degrees of comprehension that can be achieved. They are level zero, which is not actually a level per se because there's no learning occurring. Here we're not able to recall what we read or watched. This is what usually happens to the information we absorb in our YouTube video binges or to the people that read a book a day. Don't hate me if you're one. Now, the first level of learning is remembering. Most of the learning and studying we do happens at this level. This is the one related to being able to remember what we read and watch, like the mathematical formula that we talked about. This kind of learning is usually forgotten after a few days or weeks, basically most of high school and university. The second level of learning is understanding. Memorizing is not the same as understanding. As an example, I can memorize a Chinese phrase like Wu Shi Huan Chi Su, but be completely clueless about the meaning of it. On the other hand, I can understand the Chinese language and easily construct that or any other sentence. This level of understanding is necessary for the effective application of any piece of knowledge, whether that's a math theorem, a coding language, or a tennis swing. Now, the third level of learning is making it yours. If you think about it, anything created, invented, discovered, and written was done by someone. Those people didn't need to memorize anything because they were the ones coming up with it in the first place. When you study, you may not just memorize something, but also understand it. You know what the subject is about, but it's on a completely different level to make it yours. When you make a subject, a topic, or a formula yours, you are as if the creator of the thing. You are in the same place as the one writing it, and the level in which you grasp the concept concept is way deeper than we normally call understanding. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So how do we move from the first level of learning to the second, and hopefully to the third one? Come the Feynman technique into the picture. The Feynman technique is derived from Richard Feynman's studying and teaching methods. 
Feynman was a popular American physicist who made insightful discoveries in the fields of quantum mechanics, superfluidity, and particle physics. He also received the Nobel Prize in 1965 for the development of quantum electrodynamics. But apart from being a great physicist, he was also known to be a great teacher and explainer. He used to boil down very complicated scientific concepts into something comprehensible to a primary or high school student. The crux of the Feynman technique is basically trying to explain to yourself what you're learning and studying, and by doing it, you realize which sections are not very clear and need further reinforcement. The steps for this technique are, first, choose a concept, formula, or subject. Second is, explain the concept like you're teaching it to a child. The idea here is to write down in a comprehensive way everything you learned about your subject. Remember to keep it simple. Use examples, connections with our concepts, and analogies. If you catch yourself using complicated jargon, chances are that you're not understanding the concept deeply. Identify knowledge gaps. Once you go through everything you know about your topic and try to explain it in a simple manner, it will be clear to you which sections need further study and comprehension. And lastly, go through it again. Once you studied what you needed to learn, explain it again from scratch. Try to explain it as simple as you can make it, like you're teaching the concept to someone that has zero clue about anything related to it. This will force you to polish your understanding. So that's the Feynman technique in a nutshell. It's a great tool to move you from the first level of learning to the second level. If you do it successfully, you cannot avoid understanding your subject. But it doesn't necessarily take you to the third and last level of learning. When you make a concept or subject yours, it is as if you invented or discovered for the first time. You are not just understanding something, you are creating and discovering it real time. And that's way more powerful. As an example, imagine not just understanding the Pythagoras theorem, you are discovering it like Pythagoras did. You make the same insights, connect the same dots, and arrive at the same truth. Once you make something yours, it will feel like the famous eureka moment of Archimedes. Everything just makes sense and you just get it. You probably had a classmate in your physics class that got straight A's all the time. Without studying nearly as half as you did. And most likely the reason is because he made the formulas his own. He didn't memorize them, he just understood them at a very deep level. All of this sounds cool and fun, but how do we get there? You do it with the Feynman Technique 2.0. This is a revisited and improved version of the Feynman Technique that includes some simple but powerful tips that will boost and farther deepen your understanding of your subject. If you follow them correctly, it will be just a matter of time until you make any concept yours. Start with not knowing. Since the idea is to be in the same place as the person creating or writing about the subject that we want to learn, we must put ourselves in his or her shoes. And the best guess is that she didn't know about the subject until she discovered it. So we must do the same. By starting with a clean slate, we are in a much better position to grasp what the person grasped at the moment of writing about the subject. Of course, this will vary if you're learning about science, math, psychology, or philosophy, but the idea remains the same. Ask why. When we are studying and ask why, we discover aspects of our subject that were not very clear that we were just memorizing or believing that were true instead of actually understanding it. Asking why several times help us dive deeper into what we are learning and improves our clarity and comprehension. Sure, the Pythagorean theorem says that a squared times b squared is equal to c squared, but why? That's where things get interesting. Or in music, for example. Many musicians know as a fact that music has 12 notes, but why? Few of them probably know why there are 12 notes and not 14, for instance. Knowing this type of stuff may open their possibilities when creating music and thinking outside the box. Study the story of what you're learning. When you read about how what you're learning was created and discovered, it changes your relationship with the subject completely. You begin to understand where the writer was coming from and his context. For example, how did Newton discover the law of gravity? What was believed before that? What were the clues and observations that led Newton to formulate his theories? This same framework can be applied in engineering, computer programming, economics, and even business. Using the Feynman Technique 2.0 by adding the steps to your learning sessions, you will get to the third level of learning in no time. And once you reach it, I can assure you that the depth of your understanding will help you learn 10 times as fast and effectively. And perhaps more importantly, it will make it way more fun than trying to memorize bullet points and demonstrations. So that's it you all, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like it, destroy this button to subscribe to this channel, if you want to keep watching, this is a video you'll like. Also, feel free to share this video with a friend that will benefit from it. See you soon!